What is the point of a college essay? You have the ability to showcase pretty much three things. Personal insight, which includes your life experiences. Character insight, which is made up of your personality and your interests. And then lastly, what I like to call differentiation, which is basically a combination of the previous two points and doing anything you can in your writing to stand out from the rest of the pack. A bad college essay accomplishes none of these three things. I think a really common misconception surrounding college applications is that a good essay can push your application forward. I think everyone agrees on that point, but that a bad essay is usually just discarded. Like if you have a great application and you submit some random garbage, that colleges are just gonna kind of ignore that fact and then look at your other things. Now, if you're an international student, English isn't your first language, and you have a couple grammatical errors in your essay, that's not going to kill your admissions odds. But the much bigger issue here is submitting a college essay that is objectively dumb. When your essay is clearly lazy, it's generic, it lacks insight, it's banal, it leaves a terrible impression on your admissions officer. Sure, they might not instantly reject you for having a bad essay, but when it's something that's 100% in your control, why not take a couple extra hours to take your essay to that next level, to make sure that the topic that you pick goes down the right path, and honestly, if the idea for your essay is good, the likelihood that you'll be able to execute that and make it into something nice is incredibly high, so let's just start by getting the foundation right and the rest of the building will come into place. After reading literally hundreds of college essays, I wanna share with you the the most cliche, overused ideas, and exactly how we can flip them to stories that are truly unique. The first essay I want to talk about is what I like to call the grandparent essay. The story goes something like this. When I was a young boy growing up, I used to spend time with my grandfather. He was an amazing person. He was a, a war veteran, a hero. He provided for my family. He taught me every single thing I know. And then one day, suddenly, when I was in 10th grade, my grandfather got stage four cancer and he passed away. Everyone in my family was devastated because he was the best person who ever lived and I feel really sad about it and that's it. Imagine for a second that you're an admissions officer at Stanford. You just got this essay and you're reading over it. Okay, grandpa here seems like an amazing person, really one of the best people to grace the surface of our earth. I wanna accept grandpa to my school. But what about you? The problem with these essays is that the focus becomes so directed on your role model and how they inspired you and influenced your life that you tend to forget about the fact that this essay is meant to showcase your own traits. And this applies to any essay that involves a role model, right? It could be your parents, like family and siblings, but it could also be people like professors that you work with, teachers, high school coaches for athletics, literally anyone who is in your life. Just make sure that if you're going to bring them up in an essay and use them as like an inspiration person, someone who taught you things, that the focus still remains on you, your growth, and your journey. You don't want to dedicate multiple paragraphs to raving about someone else like it's a rec letter for them. At the end of the day, you want to talk about your journey and make that the focus of your story. And one of the main ways that you can make sure that this doesn't happen is just by creating an outline for your essay. If before jumping into your essay writing, you just come up with a clear plan for everything that you want to hit, it'll become very obvious if you're spending multiple sentences or paragraphs going back to that same person and talking about how they taught you things and how they are the reason that you're the person you are today. If you have an amazing role model like that in your life, go up to them, give them a little thank you, maybe shoot them a little email if it's like some college professor or teacher, let them know that they're appreciated, that's fantastic. But then when it comes to your college essay, make sure you keep that focus on your experience. Now, if you're interested in ramping up your writing skills and productivity as we enter college app season, it is definitely worth your time to check out Skillshare who are kindly sponsoring this video. Whether you're crafting your personal statement or looking to take your passion project to that next level, Skillshare has you covered. Skillshare Skillshare is an online community with thousands of courses taught by industry experts and also familiar faces. I've personally been a member and huge fan of Ali Abdul's Productivity Masterclass since I was in high school. Learning how to hack your motivation is such an important skill in the college admissions process, and I've been able to elevate my own work by being a part of this community. On top of that, a lot of you guys have been asking me how to give your resume that final last minute push. If you're trying to get your nonprofit or business off the ground, learning from entrepreneurship experts can help you streamline that process to maximize your impact in the next few months. Skillshare Skillshare also has curated sequential classes called Learning Paths that can help you launch a business in just 90 days. There are a variety of course offerings to help you learn the skills you want, including graphic design, marketing, photography, it's all on Skillshare. You can get access to a free one month trial by clicking the link below so you have nothing to lose. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video, let's get back to it. One of the most unfortunate essays you can write is the Savior Complex essay because a lot of times people don't even realize that what they're writing about is wrong. The most common format for this topic goes something along Along the lines of this. You take a trip to some foreign country. Typically, it's going to be like a poorer country, right? Personally, I'm from India, so if you look anything like me, maybe it's somewhere in Southeast Asia, maybe it's somewhere in Africa or somewhere in rural Europe, where you go there and you see some 
terrible, terrible hardship. Let's just put the word hardship in quotes because what tends to happen in these types of essays where you go somewhere abroad and you start yapping about what you saw is that it's explained from a wealthy American perspective. Oh, I went to India and it was so hot. The streets were dirty. People didn't know English. Do you see how stupid that sounds? Not only is the Bangalore airport literally nicer than our own JFK airport, but the entire concept is just ridiculous. Saying that you saw some underprivileged people and it just inspired you magically one day to become a better human being is so unrealistic and out of touch. Don't go down that path. If you want to write about an essay where you spent some time abroad, you actually learned about the culture and then you grew from that experience, take the time to explain the story in a way that's understanding and is not done to clearly just add another bullet point to your resume. Be mature about the topics that you bring up and also write everything with an understanding of what it was like from the people who were there and their perspective. If you spend more time talking about real examples of you connecting with people, learning about their culture, and then actually making a real effort to improve their lives or give them some kind of support or raise awareness for those causes here in the United States, that will come across a lot better than just saying, oh, I saw these problems and I'm a better person because of it. This also ties really well into our next essay, which is the resume recap, okay? If you spend some time abroad and you worked on like a particular project, do not make the entire essay essay, just focus on that extracurricular and explaining it in depth. There are other places in your college application where it makes way, way more sense to talk about those ECs. Do not do it in your personal statements. If you want to go in depth into some amazing work that you've done, do it at a minimum in the additional information section if you don't have space anywhere else. Do not use your main number one essay in the personal statement to try to elaborate on it further. That's just such a waste of space. The resume recap essay is basically when within your personal statement, you either just give like your entire life story, all the different achievements that you've done and just go over the top 10 activities in like awards and honors list that you've already made. You just go over that again in this essay or it's an essay that's on like some other kind of topic, but you decided to slip in like another one paragraph or even sometimes just one sentence about some achievement that you had that just throws off the entire tone. Let me make this very clear. You are not slick when you try to bring up an award or accolade that you have within your Common App essay. You gotta remember, the people reading your essays do this for a living. It doesn't come across as you just casually mentioning it and you being like some super bright person. It comes off as a humble brag and no one likes that person. A great place to actually bring up these activities if you wanna strengthen everything that you're submitting is in the supplemental essays where it actually makes sense to leverage your prior experiences to answer those questions better. If a college is asking you about why you're interested in the particular major you're applying for, of course it makes sense to bring up your other activities. This is the place to do it. But when it comes to your personal statement, you have so much room for creative freedom. Why would you waste it talking about something that is not relevant to your personality or your character or makes you stand out from other applicants? My personal least favorite essay topic has to be the tragedy or sob story essay. Now let me make this clear. If you actually had something really meaningful happen in your life, something that defined your entire childhood, it changed the trajectory of like the school that you went to, the courses you were able to take or the opportunities that you had and much just on a much broader scale it actually reflects in your identity 100 you can bring that up here but for the average viewer watching this let's just have a one-on-one -on -one real conversation for a second i personally grew up in a suburban neighborhood with parents that had good steady jobs I have not seen financial struggle. There's nothing shameful in admitting that you didn't have to worry about putting food on the table as a teenager. We always see these like incredible feel good rags to riches stories online. And sometimes like in our mind, we wanna mimic that and show colleges, oh my God, my life was so hard, but look how far I've come. Here's my honest take. If you really look at your life, and it wasn't that hard. Don't try to lie to colleges about it because when you compare your struggles with the str actual struggles of people, people who are cancer patients, people who grew up in like war-torn countries and are refugees, people who were separated from their parents, like, how are you going to compare to them, man? In my eyes, it's honestly like disrespectful and demeaning to even try to compare like the little struggles you would have had as like a suburban kid to someone who's actually been through it and has made it out, been successful in their grades and school, worked incredibly hard to get to where they are. And over here, you're trying to pretend, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my story was also hard. I also had to work as hard as, no, you didn't, bro. No, you didn't. So just taking a step back here, right? What's the actual mistake that students tend to make? I get a lot of people who send in their college essays for me to personally review or just to take a look at for fun. And what people end up doing is they try to incorporate these little details of like sadness or something hard that happened. Typically that means like a, a relative or like a family member passing away, usually something like a grandparent, which tends to be like a pretty common experience for a lot of people in high school. Or that point of sadness is just a little bit more trivial, right? Like you got cut from the basketball team or you got a bad grade in class. If you 
find yourself trying to incorporate some kind of a tragedy into the essay that's not really meaningful to the story and it's only being thrown out there as like a, a weak form of emotional appeal, see how much better the essay reads if you just remove it and use that space that you now have to focus on the better parts of the essay, right? The humor, the cleverness, the creativity, being able to build a much stronger narrative around the actual focus rather than some random pathos. And the last topic you definitely wanna avoid is strongly opinionated essays. You don't know who's going to be reading your college essays. So taking a stance on things like political views or religion is just generally not a good idea. And it's something that you might hear a lot of advice on online. I wanna give you like one level of deep for insight as you know I like to do on this channel think about it this way different schools have their own beliefs so for example if we take the Ivy League universities generally speaking most Ivy League schools lean towards that liberal side with a school like Brown University for instance definitely being more openly liberal and if you ask the students on campus the surveys show that like 70% of people believe that the campus is very liberal and on the flip side of this if you're applying to a school like BYU for instance clearly it's going to be a more conservative institution. So if you're in the process of positioning up your application in a way that maybe fits one direction or another, just keep in mind who your target audience is and what personal details about your life you really want to be sharing with colleges. At the end of the day, these things typically matter more for you in your college experience going there rather than from an actual admission standpoint, but it is something to keep in mind just to make sure that you don't shoot yourself in the foot while trying to incorporate some special detail about your life to colleges. If you're really on the fence about whether you should or shouldn't include some aspect of your life in the college essay, maybe consider leaving it out, it just might be safer. The goal of your college essay is not to fit some image that you think the college is looking for, but rather to showcase your own best qualities and thoughts through ideas that you organically have. If you're watching this far into the video, I know that you're a bright student because you're taking the effort to actually improve your college essays. There are so many really, really smart students out there who just kind of get lazy around this process. Even though they have amazing uh, GPA and SAT and resume, they get lazy around writing college essays because it takes a little bit more work and they think that it doesn't really matter. Put in that extra effort at the final stage and colleges will notice it. You will be rewarded for it. And if you write a good personal statement, you can use it for so many other things as well. You can use it for scholarships. You can use it for national merit. There's so many other competitions that you can recycle this essay for. Pick a topic that you feel excited to write about. And I have a bonus tip here for you as well. You can quite easily test an idea or a topic and feel free to do this in your own work by taking that idea and just outlining what you would talk about for that particular essay. Once you put together the outline, it should become clear whether there's potential to have depth in the essay, to be able to incorporate the personality traits that you want. And if that seems to be the case and it's looking like a green flag, then you can go ahead and write the essay. If you start doing that idea testing and it doesn't really seem to be coming into fruition, you're getting stuck a lot. Getting stuck a little bit is fine, but getting stuck a lot, like full on blocks, maybe it's time to shift direction a little bit. You can keep the overall essay structure, but maybe you change the plot line a little bit, or if that doesn't seem to be helping this case, maybe we try a whole nother idea altogether. That's the whole part of the brainstorming process, right? Through trial and error, and over time, eventually we get to that beautiful personal statement idea that you can submit to all of your Ivy League schools. If there are any other videos you want me to make regarding college essays, maybe I'm reacting to some, maybe I'm explaining some and taking some of the best ones online and breaking them down, I would be happy to do that. Just let me know in the comment section below. You can also follow and DM me on Instagram if you have any questions. Lock in and get your one month free trial of Skillshare in the description. Thank you all so much for watching. This has been your Pratik. Peace.